movie looks incredible and the quality that's on this DVD and the special features on it are also really kick-ass. Alright, now as for my explaining as to why I actually like the prequel movies, this is it right here. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to present to you the Star Wars Clone Wars animated series. The one reason why I do not, why I, I'm relatively easy on the prequel movies is for this shit right here. This motherfucking shit right here is fucking bad ass. This is one of the most action-packed, kick-ass, awesome, epic cartoons ever made. It was made by a guy named Gendy Tartakovsky, who you may know as the creator of Dexter's Laboratory and the Powerpuff Girls, as well as Samurai Jack. So, this guy, he made my childhood, because I spent all my year childhood years watching Cartoon Network and watching shows like Powerpuff Girls, Dexter's Laboratory, and Samurai Jack. And this show right here is fucking bad ass. And the one reason why I'm and the one reason why I'm usually I'm quite lenient on the prequel movies is because if those movies had not been made, if George Lucas had not spent all that money and all that time making those movies, then we would not have this amazing cartoon right here. It picked this part here, it picks up a little a little bit where episode 2 left off, and this part right here, this, the series completely ends exactly where Star Wars Episode 3 picks up. And that's why it's awesome. I, um, I've heard people say that the new uh, CG animated Star Wars Clone Wars series was good. I'm not really interested in watching that one, though, because I saw the movie of that. And let's just say that I really wasn't impressed. So yeah, that's my explanation as to why I like the Star Wars prequels. This series is so good. Oh my god, if you haven't seen this, then... I don't know, just see it. The Valley of Guanji, another great dinosaur movie with more, even more great special effects by Ray Harryhausen. Ray Harryhausen was the king of stop-motion animation in this time. I've got even more of his movies over there. The Crawling Eye, also known as the Trollenberg Terror. Uh, this this is a pretty fun. This is a pretty fun movie. It's literally about it's a, about a gigantic eyeball monster with tentacles that travels around inside of a cloud. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty far out, but, you know, it, it was the 50s. It's a B-movie from the 50s, so, you know, it, it's good fun. Cannibal Holocaust. One of the most disturbing, fucked up, gory movies I've ever watched. The Clockwork Orange. I, many people consider this to be Stanley Kubrick's best movie. I think it's a close second to 2001 of Space Odyssey, but I do think this is an amazing film. King Kong vs. Godzilla. His name was Jason, a documentary that talks about the entire history of the Friday the 13th movies. Great little documentary. <clears throat> Texas Chainsaw Massacre Ultimate Edition. Halloween, 25 Years of Terror, a documentary about the history of the Halloween series. Horror of Dracula, the very first Hammer Dracula movie to be made that starred Christopher Lee. I'm a big fan of the Hammer movies, as in case I didn't art, you haven't already heard. Uh, Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing were awesome in their roles. And it's no wonder why George Lucas actually would cast them both later in his Star Wars films. Uh, Dante's Inferno. I actually like this movie better than the game. I think this is an awesome uh, animated movie. 
I like how the animation style changes when they get into a different part of hell. It actually makes sense, unlike the Dead Space Aftermath movie. The Hammer Mummy movie. Ah, damn it. Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed. Forbidden Planet. Another great sci-fi movie from the 50s. One thing you, you may not have known about this movie is that this movie actually has Leslie Nielsen in it. A very, very young Leslie Nielsen. That's right, the same guy who died recently and who is most famous for the Naked Gun movies. Yeah, if you haven't seen this movie, then see it if you want to see a really young Leslie Nielsen. That's not the only reason you should watch it, but that's just one reason. It's a sci-fi classic. King Kong Escapes, a Toho King Kong movie, The Last Days of Pompeii, uh, a really old movie about the earthquake in Pompeii. Uh, and of course, I have the Frankenstein Universal Legacy Collection. Same goes for Creature from the Black Lagoon. All right, that does it for this sh shelf. So let's move over to this one. All right. <clears throat> right here I have, oh God, I have the uh, Ed Wood box. I'm a big fan of Ed Wood. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Ed Wood was a movie director who was most famous for making some what many people consider to be the worst movies of all time. His most famous movie is Plan 9 from Outer Space, which is considered by many to be the worst film ever made. The Dracula Legacy Collection. And then, of course, if it'll move, I have the Ray Harryhausen. I have several Ray Harryhausen movies in this box set right here. Sinbad, Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, Jason and the Argonauts, Golden Voyage of Sinbad. I got all the Sinbad movies in here, as well as the, the Three Worlds of Gulliver, which was based on the the, the story of Gulliver's Travels by uh, Jonathan Swift. Yeah, these are all great movies. They're so great that I'll just say, fuck the box, and I'll just fit them all in here. Ah. There we go. And guess what? Even more Ray Harryhausen movies. These are three of his sci-fi movies that he did. It Came From Beneath the Sea, which, talk, which is a movie about a giant octopus. Earth vs. the Flying Saucers, which is the most iconic flying saucer movie. And 20 Million Miles to Earth, which features this monster right here. And I can I think 20 million miles to Earth is one of the best monster movies ever ever made. That's just my opinion though. Uh, when worlds collide, another great 50s B movie. Uh, Conan the Barbarian, a great great movie. I'm a big fan of Robert Howard. Uh, Conan the Barbarian. Uh, the Lost World, not the sequel to Jurassic Park, but the old 1925 silent movie based on the Arthur Conan Doyle story. The stop motion in this movie is is fantastic for the time it came out. It may look a little old today, but it's still an awesome movie to watch, simply because the dinosaurs are so well animated. And it was animated by Willis O'Brien, the same guy who uh, did the animation for... Uh, King Kong, which you see over there. Uh, I have Predators, the Robert Rodriguez movie, the sequel to the original movie. The Bela Lugosi collection collects a couple of Bela Lugosi movies. That's the guy who played Dracula in the, in the 30s, in case you didn't know. The Tim Burton Batman movie. Superman the Animated Series, the Complete Series, great cartoon. Uh, 
And of course I have all three seasons of Beast Wars Transformers. Damn, almost dropped that. This is my favorite Transformers series. And what pisses me off is that they actually are releasing a brand new DVD of this series. Which simply is not fair. These DVDs, all three of them, were so expensive on Amazon. And they were only available from third party sellers. Which meant that they took a really long fucking time to get here. Now they decide to release a completely brand new DVD. That just infuriates me. <sighs> Global Metal. It's actually the sequel to uh, Metal, A Headbanger's journey, journey, where the guy, the main guy actually goes around the world discovering all kinds of heavy metal in different countries. This is another great documentary if you haven't seen it. I have the entire 80's Transformers cartoon. And the weird thing is that this box set right here is actually a pirated import from Japan. All the discs come in these, like... All the discs come in, like, the sleeves of, um... Of these little book pages. Although the although one cool thing is that each of the book pages features some really awesome comic book art from one of the uh, Dreamwave or IDW comics. See there? Yeah. And plus, all the menus are in Japanese. Even though the show itself is in English, but it can be watched in Japanese. And the reason why I don't have the regular Transformers DVDs is because the time when I bought this, there were no other Transformers DVDs. This was the only t DVD that collected the entire Transformers 80s series. And it wasn't until like a year or two after I got this DVD that they started, they decided to release the original 80s series on a regular good DVD. That always made me mad. And of course I have a Superman box set which has all the Superman movies from the original from the original 1978 Superman to Superman Returns and it even has a really good documentary about Superman. And it even co collects all the episodes of the uh, 1940s Superman Max Fleischer cartoon which is also a very good bonus. I have all three X-Men movies on Blu-ray. Again, all three Alien movies on VHS. Metropolis. A great... This is like one of the most legendary science fiction movies ever made. It was a silent movie. It's directed by a guy named Fritz Lang. Then, of course, I have all three original Star Wars movies on uh, DVD. I don't really care for these DVDs because George Lucas added a whole bunch of unnecessary visual effects in there. And of course I have Peter Jackson's King Kong on this extended DVD with all kinds of awesome bonus content and whatnot. You know, a lot of people give this movie crap, but I actually think it's a very good, very good loving remake of the original. If you actually give it a chance.